It's Bourbonite. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And on this table, one of these is the oldest Jim Beam has ever released. Oldest bourbon. And what's behind door number two? The Knob Creek 18 year. Oh. Batch one. We didn't get a batch two. I and mean, we got a sample, but we finished that. Um, yeah. So it's it's the, the, the first release. Now, we did this because... Mm, I was going to ask why, Chad. <laughs> it, it's not like it's a... Which one? If you're <laughs> at the store... It's not really a drink this or that. Faced with the... Yeah, which one should you buy? Not going to happen. No. It's because we want to try at least a little bit to get that bias out of our head when we're doing the review of the oldest bourbon Jim Beam has ever put out there. So we're gonna see which one one of these we like better, and if it's the Knob Creek 18, that just tells you that tells you something. It does before tell we you even something. get into the to the review, you know. So this Jim Beam 20 year is from the Bardstown collection, which has become an annual release that yes. kind of a collaboration between a few different distilleries in yeah, Bardstown. Yeah, yeah, limited. It's also expensive. Uh, they went up this year. I think they're. They were either 225 or 250. Um, I'll have to uh, find that out and put it on screen. And what's a Knob Creek 18 year run? Uh, like 180, 190. Okay, so if you were to like that one better, it's both less limited and more affordable, just to put that out there. But there's seven distilleries in the Barstown collection. It used um, to only be five. That's right, they have grown. Um, I was able to go, Sarah, you were not. I was not able not, to go. Not able to go. A work conflict. Uh, I'll give you a, a quick little overview of that. Uh, the ones that stood out, of course, were the 20 year Jim Beam. The Barstown Bourbon Company was excellent. The Heaven Hill, which was a seven and 16, or I should say aged between seven and 16 years at 105 proof was rather good. And uh, the Lock Still, which was just a nine-year Kentucky high rye, I thought was uh, was great, and, and they were all they were all great. Preservation, Lux Row, Limestone Branch. Uh, Everybody brought something to the table. There wasn't a bad one in there, but those were sort of the ones that those were your stood highlights. out to me. Now, I do want to play you first before we get into this. Uh, Chad Watson of My Daily Bourbon was there, and we went outside the tent because they had a band playing. Had to get to where you can probably mm. still hear him, but I uh, wanted to get his opinion on it. So before we do ours, here's Chad Watson. Man, this 20 year beam, like chocolate cherry, cherry cordial, like graham cracker. This is, it's one of those 20 year whiskeys you hear about that's not too over oaked and just over the top. It's just perfectly balanced on the nose and even more so on the palate. It's not overly tannic, it's not drying, it's just, it's sweet, dessert forward. It's probably the best, or I will say, I think it is the best 20 year whiskey I've ever had. And I wish I had more. Sadly, I, I do not. No, this is well worth it. This is probably the best thing that I've had tonight by far. No, it is the best thing I've had tonight by far. Thanks, Chad, Thank for you, Chad. saying things that I haven't heard as of the timing of the recording of this episode. <laughs> That's right. So I won't be biased to what he said because I don't know, actually. It's I haven't not like seen we the have clip. actual playback. I haven't seen the clip yet. Here. All right. Well, so these are blind. These are blind. I guess we'll just start here. We'll start with this one. Oh, Jim Beam nuttiness. <laughs> Definitely Jim Beam. Super oak heavy, nutty, earthy. Dried peanut. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate. Almost like a, a, a super oak. oaky Reese cup. Yeah. Reese's cup. Reese's cup. Reese's. 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 We say Reese's, and then people in the comments are like Reese's cup. It's Reese's. Well, I think the reason I say Reese's is because Reese's pieces. Reese's pieces, but that's not how you say pieces. No, it's, it's Reese's pieces. Pieces. Reese's pieces. Don't you listen to Will Arnett? No, sorry. Not Reese's. Sorry. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Um, you go. Oh, okay. I'll this go. This one. I shall. Ladies first. Less of a beam forward nose, but still a little nutty. Okay, that's, okay. I won't say. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. A little less of a nose, honestly, than this yeah, one. Yeah, this one had a more powerful, this is a more expressive nose. I make these things up. <laughs> Sarah, that is 90% of whiskey reviews. Just mm. making it up. Just making it up. I just say what I feel. It's like mm. therapy with, to the camera, but I'm just saying how I feel, how the whiskey makes me feel and how I feel about the whiskey. Okay, this one, less of a nutty profile. I also feel, I feel that this yeah, one has your less feelings? of a nut, nutty okay. profile. Uh, it definitely has oak, but not as much oak as this one. Mm. And it has more leather. Leather being a note found on age, it's not like we drink leather or lick leather, but it's just one of, one of those tasty notes. One of those tasty notes. Mm -hmm. I do think this one has a bit better texture, a bit better mouthfeel. Is spicier too. I get like a it's tingle a of spice um, on the sides of my tongue. But I feel like it's a more well-rounded. It's more balanced. Whereas this is directional in that yeah. like chocolate oak peanut butter yeah. kind of note. I'm gonna go back to this one as we should. Yes, always do that round two, folks, because now we have the influence of 
this guy I mean, as we're trying this guy. Let's not knock the mouthfeel on that one either, though. The finish does go more into like mm, aged yeah. oak, bitter oak, like firewood oak kind of thing. Yeah. Um, out, oak, wood that's been outdoors Ooh. and rained on and not, and then dried in the back. And it's got a, its heat. It's got a tug. It does have a tug. I like the flavors in this one, but. Well, go back to our <sighs> second sample. Okay. I enjoy both of these very much. If I was looking for something with the Jim Beam signature profile, if that's what you like, then it's this one. If I was looking for something more well-rounded, a little elevated and more texture, I would go with this one. Agreed. Today, I do feel like I have to give it to this one here. I feel like it's bringing a little more to the table in terms of texture and finish. It is not, though, giving the signature Jim Beam profile. If this was a blind, I don't know that I would say that's beam. I, I, I don't, I don't either. And I still like it a lot. And, and when you, the first thing you said on this one, the very first nose, you said, oh, Jim Beam Nuttiness. I was like, in my head, well, now I know what they are. Because- That's what you think. At the, that's what I think. At the event, the 20 year did not have the Jim Beam Nuttiness on the nose. It didn't have it on the palate either. So I feel like the one that we picked, you at least were completely I, out of the, I that knowledge. I have been in a vacuum. And I didn't I know any of that. Just, I mean, I agree because it was honestly what I thought, but I feel like this is a Jim Beam 20. The Let's one that we have picked is, yes, the Jim Beam 20 year. Okay. James B. Beam Bar Sound Collection Series 20 year. <laughs> but even in doing this comparison, I don't think it's not, not that it's not fair, but it's apples and oranges. If you want an older Knob Creek, something that's true to a Knob Creek profile that has that Jim Beam nuttiness, that's and you want the 18, a this is point. a quality pour and it's that a, stays true to that. It is a Knob Creek. It is a Knob Creek through and through. These are both Jim Beams, but this is a Knob Creek. This is not a Knob this Creek, is, even though it's the same mash bill. This, neither one of these are the OGD mash bill. This gives me more kind of like that though, in mm -hmm. the OG, whereas it's I less agree. of that Jim Beam nuttiness. That's actually what I guessed uh, at at the tasting w with the you know the Jim Beam guy there, I, I said, would think this was the OGD mash bill. Oh, oh Granddad mash bill? No, it's 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 the Beam mash bill. So isn't that crazy? Both the same exact same mash bill, two years apart, completely different profiles, and that is the art of picking barrels to a profile, right? I mean, and, and blending. There would be something too to know, like to study, you know, where 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 these were pulled from. Where did they, the, well, the I know, barrels that went into these spend most of their time? Right, I don't know about the 18 year Knob Creek, but this one I do know, first floor. First of, floor, of, of, uh, that of, makes of sense. Of one, of one warehouse, I do believe. So I wonder, also, I know the original batch proof was 112. They only added a little bit of water to take this down to 109. Okay, I that's cannot a, taste nine points of proof, proof difference, difference between, the, the Knob Creek is 100 by the way. No, I cannot taste that proof difference between these two. No, now that we know this is the 20 year, I'm gonna go grab more of it and we're gonna do more of a <laughs> of a talk about it. But first, we wanna pause and tell you about our home on the internet, it's whiskeyambitions.com, it's where you can get the hat that I'm wearing, the whiskey t-shirt that I'm wearing, Sarah, that hoodie, cause it's got a hood, you know But there's also one without a hood. <laughs> That's true, it's called a sweatshirt. Um, the Glen Cairns we're drinking from, also our bottle cut candles, our elemental elixir cocktail syrup, our new Glen Cairn tasting kit is there as well. And more that's always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash experimentite and join our community for as little as one buck a month. That's right, just one bone a month. Um, yeah, that's what they say. Bones, right? Sure. Sure. Pirates. Pirates. Uh, one doubloon a month. One coin. <laughs> That's where we do after the episode exclusives on our Friday episodes of uh, first access to new merch and barrel picks and the opportunity to participate in barrel picks depending on your tier and discounts on that merch and more. Cool. Cool. Uh, we'll be right back. All right, so we're back here now with just the Jim Beam 20. Just the 20, just the 20, because we want to talk about, I mean, this is a big deal. This is the oldest bourbon that Jim Beam has ever released that's not been finished. Uh, you remember the Jim Beam Masterpiece? I do, remember I was that? just about to ask about that. It was that. a, you know, you yeah, yeah. open it up. Um, I thought it was interesting that their Masterpiece was finished. I always yeah. have said that. Like, how is your... The quit? reason I said that is because I knew it would trigger you. I knew it would trigger you. I am me. triggered by that. Trigger warning next time, Sarah. Uh, yeah, that your Masterpiece is not gonna be a tried and true bourbon. It's gonna it's be It's the a, Masterpiece a of your distillery. Whiskey. Your bourbon distillery. Is a finished whiskey. And if it was Scotch or Irish or anything else, I could understand that. It's 
intriguing <sighs> that that's the route they went instead of just showcasing their distillate it's as like, a what? U.S. distillery. No, that was a two hundred dollar bottle, uh, five, six, seven years ago. It's been a minute. It has been a minute. We do have one. Oh, you talk all that smack, and then you're like, "Well, we do have one." <laughs> well, we got it. I mean, I got it. I mean, I, I, mean, I wasn't it. happy about it. You know but what? I it, it. it sat around. It did. Uh, it was on the on the you know top shelf at like uh, Kroger behind the register forever. forever. And then finally, they were like, "Last call, lower the price." So I was like, "All right, you know." Yeah, he waited it um, out. Nobody, yeah. nobody want that. Well, you know, five, six, seven, whatever <laughs> years ago, bourbon wasn't as popular as it is now. And that price, and that point price point with the finishing. Scared. And also, I feel like Jim Beam. You know, not James B. Beam, as they've churched but, it up since then, but just Jim Beam. Two hundred dollars. People are like, "What that twelve dollar bottle over there? That Jimmy White label?" Do you know you what? Two hundred dollar. I bet that project is something that really like, showed them something. I think that they probably got a big learning from that project. This is just going into the marketing speak, and that they made decisions to transfer to James B. Beam or to transition based on the reception of that bottle. I think that bottle was maybe a turning well, point in the distillery. When, yeah, because you know every distillery has their flagship bottle, right? Mm -hmm. For Buffalo Trace, it's, it's Buffalo, Buffalo Trace. Trace. For Four Roses, it's probably the 80 proof, I would imagine. It's probably the tan label, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, Evan Williams, it's Evan Williams Black. You know, uh, Jim Beam, it's Jim Beam White Label. It's 80 proof. It's four years. It's the it's, every man's bottle. What, $15? Yep. And if that's what you hang your hat on, yeah, you're going to get a little bit of a perception problem. Like, I remember back in the day on Facebook, and I'm sorry for going into such a tangent, uh, someone wrote this, uh, this post, scathing post, did you all know Knob Creek is made by Jim Beam? Ah, oh, and they were just, this is obviously foreign to them that companies do things do like this. Yeah. Boycott, boycott Knob Creek. It's just made by Jim Beam. And they were like, they were, it was like they were uh, Nightline or something exposing this big oh. secret. Like, oh, and I just laughed. Anyway. And when you have a brand that's associated with every man and the accessibility and the low price and you try to put out a bottle at that high price point that's also then finished. So not only do people not really understand at this time, mm -hmm. the bottle itself, like what is it? Right. They can't understand why something like that of that price is coming from this distillery that makes that $15 bottom shelf or close to thing over there. Your, they can't wrap entry, their minds around entry it. Entry bottle. So. Yeah. But now in 2024, they have unlocked they're that over more. that. I mean, yeah. every distillery is over that, I feel like. People well, are like, give us your exclusive, give they, us your oldest. Yes, but they've also best. arisen to the occasion by mm -hmm. completely renovating their distillery. They have the kitchen table and they do like chef driven events and pairings now, which meets them at this name change transfer to be James V. Beam. Maybe you out there are like, I didn't want that. Now they're going to charge more for everything. I wish they would have just stayed Jim Beam and not done any of that stuff. Hear you. Mm. But from the point of they want to sell bottles and make money, yeah. they got to keep with the times, and the times are... Times are changing. Times are changing. Um, getting back to the 20-year... The yes, let's get back to it. Uh, it. It's so weird, and it's such a such a thing that we call the flight fight effect. When you, you know, in flight fight, we have four whiskeys side by side and they affect each other. When you take that Knob Creek out of there. You, it does taste just, like Jim Beam. Well, a little bit more, yes. More, but not. But not. I get more of the, honestly, I get more of the age. I get I more of the exceptionality that's in there more when you're just drinking it by itself. Mm. Oak, tobacco. Oak, tobacco, leather. Mm. The exceptionality, if that can be a thing, let's just say it, it can be mm -hmm. in this. In this. This bottle, like, I have an aversion to, generally, like, 15, 16 is about my tipping point for, like, that's too much oak for me. But it depends on treatment. This is a 20-year that doesn't taste like something else like 20 years, like Pappy 20 year, right. I think is overly oaky. And 23, for my, definitely. For my personal preference, right. this does not give me that. Mm -hmm. This is, it's like the perfect proof and level of oak for this age. It is great. Whoever chose this Again, barrel, barrel selection. Barrels, yeah. Whoever did the barrel selection for this, great job. <laughs> you you know what yeah. you're doing. I mean, it is less oak than the 18 year, but we are talking about this is not Knob Creek. And, it's not and, Knob Creek. And maybe, you know, when you go from the typical nine year Knob Creek, uh, Double aged up to 18 year, that profile extends. It's super sure. oaky. I get, this doesn't have any expectations, right? Yeah. I think, again, to speak to that, goes back to the, their barrel pick team or the team that selects their barrels for different purposes. Whoever's doing that, I'm sure it is a team, they're on the money because those Knob Creek 18, 
is every bit of a Knob Creek. And those barrels could have easily been used for something like this. And it would have just been Knob Creek reimagined. Right. But they said, no, these are for this Knob brand. Creek, right. And this is for this project. Yeah. And they yeah. know how to choose for their different right. brands. Do we put, I mean, we got this much left of it, but do we put this in the blind best of the year? Condition? Maybe, I don't know if we have enough, but we'll think about it. Let's think about too, <sighs> like how widely was this released? Not at all. Like how many, Not very. how many bottles were there? I mean, you had to be at that event and be in Bardstown on the days surrounding that when they were releasing them at the distillery in order to get them. The vast majority of people will never see that bottle, but I do think it's interesting that we talk about this because like you said, it's the oldest thing that they've put out. So let's examine that right. and see how it compares to their other products. To me, it led to a realization of what a good job their barrel selection team does of saying, this barrel, taste it, this goes here, this yes. goes here. Yes. Like they do a really good, I didn't yeah. think about that before. Now that we've done this, well, I learned it, something. If it does go in the blind best of the year contention and it does well, yes, there's gonna be blowback. Of course. But we're used to that by now. Mm. And the other thing to, I think the reason why it would be important if it did say it, it, it got first place or you know top three or whatever. It's not to say you should feel bad about not having this bottle. It's to say you really need to pay attention to older Jim Beam. Whenever expressions come out that are in that you know 18 and plus range, you really need to pay attention to it because it, it blind tested really, really well. Really well. I do think people are generally paying attention to them. But well, I think that doing this yeah. side by side led to an interesting discussion where we gain an appreciation for what they do there and how far they've come in terms of where they were five to seven years ago and where they are today. Correct. So take that away from this. Don't, this isn't a recommend or not. Right. Because what would be the point? Um, we don't even have a bottle. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just keep that in mind. This yeah. was a study and discussion and what what this means. There you go, yeah. 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 It's been a long episode, but it's I think it's been a really it's been good, a good discussion and we want to continue the discussion down in the comments below. So please let us know how you feel about older age Jim Beam, the distillery in general, whatever you feel about. Whatever your thoughts are, we want to hear them. Down in the comments below. Unless they're mean, then don't say it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's where we're gonna leave it. If you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here. Hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, drink more bourbon.